Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I am your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really happy to have with me once again Jim Payne. Jim is the Chief Executive Officer of Dynasert Inc. That's a company that trades primarily in Canada. Uh, it trades uh, under the symbol DYA, and it trades in uh, the United States under the symbol uh, DYFSF. That's where I purchased the shares of these uh, of the stock. The company is trading at around ten cents a share in U.S. money, around eleven or twelve cents in Canadian dollars. Welcome, Jim. I'm really glad you could join me again. Thank you, Dave. It's always a pleasure. Always good to talk to you. Uh, we had you on once to hear your exciting story. It is indeed a very exciting story because of the prospects of. I think the prospects of considerable growth that you have ahead of you because you're doing a good thing. You are saving truck drivers and other people money by uh, through fuel efficiency and you are also reducing the carbon emissions that come from the engines as a result of your technology. For the benefit of those who may not have heard you the first time you're on our show, can you talk again a little bit about your transportable hydrogen generator that uh, that is really reducing um, the consumption of fuel and reducing also the carbon emissions. Sure, Jay. Our product it is called the Hydrogen. It is a, it's a very unique, patent-pending, uh, computerized, on-demand electrolysis unit. It's designed for the internal combustion engines. What it does is it actually supplies the air intake with small amounts of hydrogen and oxygen uh, on demand, and it uh, by doing this, it results in, in increased fuel economy, increased torque, extending the, it extends the oil engine life, uh, certainly reduces the downtime of the engine, and very much so reduces the uh, re- reduces the emissions. You. Uh You've had it tested on some 200 Pepsi trucks in the Detroit markets. I guess maybe there was 100 that was that used the device and 100 that did not as a control group. Can you talk to our listeners a little bit about the performance that, that has come from that test? Sure. I mean, that was, that was our uh, earlier version of what we've got now, but yet uh, we Pepsi actually purchased and ran 200 units. But they did a case study with 100 trucks with and 100 trucks without. It, uh, at the end of the year, they publicly put out in their own magazine, uh, reduced fuel, it improved the fuel economy by 14.8% on an average on 100 trucks and reduced the, reduced the emissions clean across the board. It reduces the emissions, you know, depending on the toxic gases, you know, from the lowest, it's 10 to 12% to the highest of 40%. Oh, that's that's very significant, uh, I would think. Uh, and uh, do you have a sense of uh, how much it costs the truck drivers to purchase one of these units, and, and what sort of the payback period might be? Yeah, yeah, you know, an installed unit, all in all, done with installation, and cost right around ten thousand dollars. And their return on investment is average from eight to twelve months. Mm-hmm. Now, that's just on the fuel economy. Uh, that does not take into account. You know the, the reduced downtime, or the or the uh, extended uh, engine life, engine oil life, mm-hmm. and the increased torque. And I would imagine there could be also some savings. This is, uh, of course, maybe a bit of blue sky, but if uh, carbon emissions standards are put in place, and if there's some ability to save money that way, perhaps. Absolutely, and that is quite honestly why you know we have just recently taken the road we have working with government officials here because uh, it is very important to have the proper validation on the on the reduction of, uh, of the carbon footprint. You know, with that, you know, we will end up getting you know carbon credits, and uh, the end users, uh, you know, the government is looking to be able to validate giving tax credits. To the end users also. So oh, so that could also sweeten the economics for the users of those that pay ten thousand dollars to buy one of these units. Well, even so, ten thousand dollars, I suppose, uh, for a let's say an independent truck driver might be, you know, it's 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 not nothing. Let's put it that way. You have arranged, though, however, I believe I don't know if you finalized it yet, but it's my understanding you may have done so. Uh, a leasing arrangement uh, with some company somewhere, I, I can't remember if, if I've seen the announcement or not, uh, that would provide lease financing for a truck uh, for, for truck drivers. Is that right? That is right, Jay. We've just recently, it's a company called Global Access Capital Corp. Uh, they have you know, uh, just agreed to offer leasing on our, on our units for any, uh, any future any trucks. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and also, uh, an, on another front, it's my understanding that you have, I don't know if you've finalized it or not, but at least there was some agreement in the making potentially with some company in India to start distributing your hydrogen device. That is correct. In fact, we have a uh, representative going over there at the end of the month, uh, has several meetings set up with large companies over there, but also with the several government official, officials over there in India also, because uh, they have also just implemented uh, you know, some very stringent uh, laws against uh, carbon emissions and are very much looking for a product like what we have. Last time we talked, I know we, we talked about third-party verification. You mentioned that you had this... Uh this case study with the Pepsi trucks, the 200 Pepsi trucks, but you need a third-party verification, apparently, independent third-party verification, before you can really start your sales program in earnest. Why isn't the 200 truck trial good enough? Well, first of all, as far as the 200, I mean, that was not, and that was independent, but it's not considered third-party. Third-party, okay. Uh, we have also just, just recently, because we're now working with with the Canadian government, both the provincial and the federal government, and they have expressed a very, very strong interest in what we're doing. Uh, and you know, with our new, with our new federal government, they have taken a very, very strong stand towards uh, towards a carbon footprint and a reduction of that. So we are working hand in hand with them, uh, and we are working through uh, receiving government grants. We're working through. You know, the process with them right now, but with that, I mean, they want to see actual government validation, so we are now working with them to get government validation, and what this is going to do, like I mentioned, carbon credits, I mean, this is going to validate the product not only for fuel savings, but, you know, more importantly, the, the carbon reductions, and with that, you know, they are looking at putting tax credits on four feet, not to put the units on. And so, I mean, this is a much higher, uh, you know, accreditation or a much higher validation rank than what we were initially working at. But, mm-hmm. uh, but this certainly, uh, you know, now that, you know, we have a very great relationship with them and a very strong understanding of what it is that they want, it, you know, made all the sense in the world to, to move in this direction. The last time we talked, it, uh, I was under the impression that we might start seeing some meaningful sales fairly quickly. And, but that was before you decided to, to use the government for third-party verification. Is it possible that that may be delaying your sales some, but the, in the long run, perhaps, as you suggest, making it a lot, uh, you know, giving it a stronger accreditation? You're absolutely right, Jay. Uh, you know, I will certainly, you know, very, very bullish and optimistic that we would, you know, get the initial validation very quickly and convert to sales. Now, we, you know, we are, without a doubt, moving in that arena. We are actually building out a brand new space, uh, you know, a large facility for the, for the assembly of the products for the trucking mm-hmm. industry. Uh, you know, this is all, you know, like I said, once again, you know, we are, you know, we are working hand-in-hand with with the Canadian government, both provincially and federally, um, you know, to uh, to do this. And the nice thing is, you know, by doing it this route, you know, it certainly does not cause any dilution for the for our current shareholders uh-huh. either. You know, which I think is very important. Right, especially I guess if you get some financing or some some aid somehow from the government would also reduce the, uh, the the shareholder dilution, which of course is very important to those of us who were in the stock earlier on. Right. Uh, well, certainly because of you know because of Paris and and because of our you know Justin Trudeau and the government and everything they're doing, you know now there is so many grants available specifically for you know for companies like us. Like they just announced a new budget here, you would swear that this budget was made specifically for companies like us. You know, I mean, and with the innovation, science, and economic development that's going on, I mean everything dovetails directly with our company and where we're at. Yeah, at the right time, uh, the right place at the right time, it seems, perhaps. Uh, well, how, you know, I know working with governments, though, it, it does uh, sometimes try your patience because it, they are, after all, a monopoly in, in government monopolies. Uh, governments can basically take their time. Uh, people go home at 5 o'clock, perhaps, and 
uh, you know, they, they're fairly regimented, and sometimes it can take longer. Do you have any sense of when you might receive third-party verification? Is there any way of knowing or some, just sort of have a sense of it? Jay, we are certainly working very quickly and very diligently to get this done, and and so is, uh, you know, so we've got several, you know, very strong parties from the government that is pulling to get this thing done and, and to fast track. Uh, for me to put a definitive date on it, Impossible. It's impossible. You know, yeah. it, it, are we expecting to see great things this year? Absolutely. Well, certainly, uh, there's no doubt that the new government up there would be more aggressive in in terms of uh, uh, the environmental issues, I suppose. And so uh, that that certainly does. Uh, have you seen a difference since the, the new administration has come in there in terms of their interest in your project? Absolutely. We have had uh, you know several visits. It's almost well, bi-weekly over the last few months. Wow. You know, from both provincial and government officials, and, uh, you know, there is a very, very strong interest. They are very excited with what we are doing. And quite often than that is why we, you know, we are moving ahead. I mean, we, you know, we have brought in a lot of, you know, added expertise. We have also, you know, committed to this, to this build-out of this new space, you know, for the, uh, for the assembly of the clock. And, and that's being done, you know, with, with full confidence that you know, everything is moving in a very positive direction. Last time we talked, you just start, you, you talked a little bit about the prospective economics for these uh, portable hydrogen units. Are you anticipating any change in the manufacturing and marketing economics from the last time we talked? And and um, maybe if you if you could perhaps just review your concept of the uh, the economics for for this business. I honestly, I think the economics, you know, of it, you know, makes more sense now than, than when we last talked. Uh-huh. Certainly, with um, you know, with the assistance of of the government and with you know, once we receive this validation with the government, uh, carbon credits are going to be a huge thing. I mean, uh-huh. carbon credits is something that you know has been a very soft unknown in North America for a long time. I think you know. Certainly in Canada and the United States, you know, they are taking a very strong stand on that. And, uh, you know, I think that in itself is going to create a whole new income stream and and a whole difference in economics for both, you know, for both the industry and for the end users. Carbon credits aside, could you possibly just uh, mention, talk a little bit about the margins on, on the manufacturing side of the business? Well, on the manufacturing side, it, you know, we know where cost comes in, and you know, reality is, you know, we are working on a sixty like percent, you know, margin between uh, between cost and wholesale. Mm-hmm. So, okay. That's pretty pretty healthy margin, I would say, and if it if it comes true, uh, and I have no doubt that you believe it will. So, I mean, it's it, if people start to look at uh, the volumes that we talked about, and and I would guess that with the government behind it and a strong stamp of approval, uh, once they once they uh, provide that third party verification, it should really help your sales to take off even more rapidly. I would think than if it were some unknown third party, relatively unknown third party uh, verification. No, I, I would fully agree. I mean, you know, right now, you know, our main focus is certainly on, you know, work with the government because there's so much R&D funds available and of which we are, there's so much that's eligible for us. And, you know, as we move, especially as we move from the trucking industry and move into the other arenas, you know, because we start looking at, you know, looking at the rail and looking at shipping and looking at large stationary generators. Um, you know, that is an area that is an untapped territory. It is a, it is an area that, you know, the margins are even greater, and there is a huge demand for it. Yeah, I, I know I talked to one of your directors, Ron Perry, uh, about this, and he gets really excited about some of those Prospects and even some others that uh, you didn't mention, but you, do you see then the possibility for ships and trains and diesel fuel generators in remote locations to be even possibly even bigger than the trucking industry? I believe it is bigger than the trucking industry. Yes, I mean the trucking industry is a huge industry, and then we get into trucking. You know, we get into two buses mm-hmm. and, and you know arenas like that. Uh, 
had some really good conversations, you know, with City Buffers just recently. And although I'm not confident we would see as great a field improvement there, I think, you know, the reduction in their downtime and the reduction in the in the carbon emissions will be uh-huh. huge. Yeah, especially yeah. for government uh, government transportation, I suppose. They would really want to be on top of that. That's correct. Jim, as far as you know, are there any... Uh, is there any serious competition to what you're doing? You know, Jay, it's interesting. There's lots of people, um, you know, moving into the hydrogen world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, there's a, a lot of companies that are looking at fuel cells and working in the fuel cell arena, which is, it, that's a whole different field. It's not something that's a competitor to us whatsoever. And then, you know, certainly as you down the road, I believe that eventually we will get to the hydrogen society you know, where people are burning hydrogen as a fuel. But mm-hmm. I think we are a long way from that. I certainly think that, you know, we are a bridge to that, and I think that bridge is a very, very long bridge. So the technology that, that your competitors are talking about is, is considerably removed from what is uh, what is being used today, whereas yours is, is really just sort of an adjustment to that. That is correct. And I think, you know, the... the other major strength of what we've got it is our new smart ECU. Now, our new smart ECU is not unlike a smartphone. Uh-huh. This is an electronic control model that is learning from the from the truck, the climate, the altitudes. The, there's literally thousands of different variables, and this thing is now, you know, learning from that and readjusting. One thing we've certainly learned along the way that you know you cannot just put you know, one fixed amount of hydrogen and oxygen into a combustion engine. I mean, because there is so many different variables and, you know, which needs, some need more oxygen, less hydrogen, some need more hydrogen, less oxygen. And it's all small amounts. I mean, we are not a fuel. We are literally a catalyst. Uh Uh, It is something that has been proven time and time again, uh, you know, over the years by the introduction of hydrogen into into a combustion engine, it improves or increases the flame spread nine to ten times. Mm, mm-hmm. So, I mean, what it really is doing is giving you a cleaner, faster, more complete burn. Mm-hmm. And it's resulting in, in very considerable fuel savings and, and reduced carbon emissions. So, it seems like it seems like an excellent story, Jim. We're going to be certainly watching. Uh, the progress of your company, and um, would certainly want to talk to you in the future because I think this is a very exciting, a very exciting story. We certainly had quite a bit of response from listeners uh, to this show who heard your first interview with us. So I really look forward to to having you back again. Anything else you might like to mention to our listeners today before we uh, before we conclude our discussion? No, I think it's important that you know, people keep us on the radar screen. I think there is you know a very Exciting story unfolding, Jay. We certainly, you know, certainly do appreciate everything that uh, everything you do and everything you say because you know, there's no question that you bring a lot of a lot of credibility to this industry. Well, we're just we're very excited. You know, sometimes I get a little overly optimistic. Sometimes I get a little too excited. So I'm told that uh, it's interesting. You know, I can honestly say, you know, in the last few days we've had with government officials, people call me excited and tell me that I'm, I'm optimistic they get more excited and more optimistic and they just keep going on and on and on you know, of all the possibilities and things. So, you know, I, I definitely think we are at the right place at the right time. Well, it certainly is an exciting story for a stock. It's a ten cents a share U.S. and uh, you know it was a market cap of, of around twenty million dollars. Uh, with the kind of prospects that you have, Jim, it is really exciting. And you know what? I wouldn't want to hear an entrepreneur not be excited about what he's doing. I think that that would be the death knell uh, of a company if you had somebody who was uh, devoting so much of their time and energy to building a company and then they'd say oh but I really don't believe in it <laughs> so that wouldn't work too well and I, I really do appreciate your your controlled enthusiasm because I you're certainly not a guy that's uh, flailing about crazily frothing from the mouth you're a very uh, very controlled person who I think really tells it like it is and I, I really thank you very much Jim for being with us and we'll look forward to doing it again sometime in the near future well, thank you Jay I appreciate it 